In this video, I want to briefly go over the idea of integrating even and odd functions. We saw the definitions of even and odd functions in the previous classes, maybe pre-calculus class or college algebra, and I'm, and I'm sure that probably you don't remember many of those things, so I want to have a brief review for you to feel more comfortable about this. When we're talking about the even functions, not evil, even functions, I always make this joke, even functions. Those are the one that swallows the negative sign, which means if you plug a negative x into your function and it appears to be the same as f of positive x, and basically negative sign disappears, you know, literally speaking, so I always say it's swallowed the negative sign, that's it. That's what you call an even function. Examples of those functions are, for example, y equals x squared. If I want to check what's happening with y equals negative x and everything squared, then it's the same thing as x squared. So negative sign just disappears. The property of even functions are if you draw a graph and you fold it using y-axis, like a butterfly, you will see that the left side completely matches the right side. So if you fold these two guys, they should match, just like a beautiful butterfly. So y equals x squared is a good way to remember even functions. Odd functions, on the other hand. Odd functions, guess what they do? If you plug negative x into your uh, function, then it splits, it just uh, spits it out. So it's going to be negative f of x. One of the examples of the odd function is a cubic function. What happens if I'm going to plug in negative x and then cube it? It becomes negative x cubed. So this is the example of the, odd, uh, of the odd function. The property of the odd function is it is symmetrical as well, but now it's symmetrical in the other way. If you fold the first quadrant to the third quadrant, then they match. Make sense? So the piece over here will match with the piece on the bottom left. And that's how you know that, uh, based on the graph, that the function is odd. So, using those properties, we now can help uh, us, this has, can help us to integrate some functions. For now, we're explaining you that uh, integration is a cumulative function, and also we mentioned something about the area below the graph. Well, we can use those properties, and we can use something that mentions that uh, if the area is above over here it's negative and then below over here is positive so maybe when you add up those together they will add up to zero that's exactly the case if the function is even also i want to mention not it's not supposed to be even everywhere just even being even on negative a and a is good enough because we're integrating from negative a to a. This is really good enough to say that the function, if the function is even, and we're integrating this function from negative a to a, then instead of doing the integration from negative a to a, I can just notice that those, this function is symmetrical with respect to y-axis, and uh, just integrate half of it, this piece, and then double the result. Since it's like a butterfly will match when you fold it, then why not just to double the result and integrate uh, from 0 to a instead of negative a to 0. Well, if you have an odd function, again, on the interval negative a a, then we'll look what happens here. This area will be negative, this area will be positive, and they have exactly the same value, for example, 5 but negative and 5 but positive, what happens when you add up these together, they basically undoing what they are doing, so the answer will be 0. That's why if you integrate odd function from negative a to a, the result will be 0. Imagine basically that you're digging a pit 
over here and the amount of the soil that you collecting outside of the pit will be exactly the same as the amount you digged out from the pit. What happens if you move it back, basically add up together? The result will be zero. There will be no pit and no little mountain as well. Examples. I have example from a student that posted this nice example in the forum I have. And it looks scary. When you just start working with this example, it is integral from negative pi over 2 to pi to pi over 2. And it has 2x raised to the 8th power. Then it has sine. And it's not just sine x, it's sine 8x. Then it's all over 1 plus x to the 12th power dx. And when you look at this integral, I don't know, many... Many of us will freak out, quit it all, and just go take a nap. And then go back and maybe try again. But you shouldn't. Of course, we did not teach you more techniques yet to solve this integral. And in the future, you will actually have more techniques. But for now, maybe you're overthinking the situation. And maybe you should just, should just check if this function is odd or even. Let's check. I will write down that f of x is this piece over here i will copy and paste but you can just rewrite it this is my function to check if it's even or odd i will substitute negative x everywhere i see x so it will be two times negative x don't forget to keep all the exponents and signs raised to the eight times sine of, now it's going to be negative 8x, all over 1 plus negative x raised to the 12. Now let's see what's going to happen. Maybe nothing interesting is going to happen. Maybe this function neither odd and not even, and then you just have to integrate somehow. But actually, since all the exponents here are even, 8 and 12 are even, they destroy, if you want to see it this way, the negative sign. So the function becomes definitely 2x raised to the 8, right? Because negative x to the 8 is just x to the 8 times, now let's talk, talk about sign in a moment, but at the bottom we have 1 plus x to the 12, because negative x to the 12 is just x to the 12. What happens with sine? Here you have to remember some trigonometric uh, pro properties of trigonometric functions. Cosine of negative x is cosine x. So that function is the one that swallows the sine. That's even. Sine of negative x gives it back. So it's going to be negative sine x. That's odd function. Remember that. So since I have negative sine over here, it will be negative sine of 8x. Since all other signs disappeared in only one negative state, and this negative is here multiplied in the numerator, I can kick it out, away, out from the whole fraction. So the answer will be negative 2x to the 8, maybe you can hear there's a thunder outside of my room, sine of 8x, I don't even need those parentheses here, over 1 plus x to the 12. And now compare the beginning and the end. What did we have at the beginning? This function in blue. What do we have at the end? This same function with negative sign in front of it. Do you see? It's exactly the same. Then I can conclude that this function is which one? The one that gives you negative sign outside. So that's odd function. Odd function. Then I go back to the properties. If you don't remember, check the cheat sheet. And the cheat sheet tells you, well, if you work with odd functions and you integrate from negative a to a, that's important. It should be negative 5 to 5 or negative 10 and 10. So it should, the number should be the same. Then 
just like with the, on this picture with the pit you digging and little mountain you making with the same soil when you're digging the pit they will contribute to each other with different signs so the result the result of addition of those two areas will be zero so the answer is zero And the explanation, okay, I need to mention again one more time because it's very important. It's not zero because we're integrating uh, odd function. It's zero because we're integrating odd function from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's important. And the answer is zero. And I can say because bc f of x is odd. Not too bad. And to show you that this is the case, I prepared a graph for you. Here it is. I ask Wolfram Alpha to plot this function from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And this is how it looks like. Very interesting. I will take this graph, copy it, and put it here at the end to show you what exactly happens with the li these little areas I introduced before. So the pink area will be the one above x-axis. We're adding up this positive area and this positive area here and this little tiny positive area. And then we're adding green color will represent negative ones. It was here negative, here negative and here negative. Well, now it's like a game for little kids. Find the one that are the same. This, let me do yellow color here. This one is the same as over here. Then uh, red color. This is the same as over here, but they all have different signs. And finally, this piece is the same as this tiny piece below X axis. So they all add up to zero. One more example is, uh, let's just really fast uh, can have example with even function. And you know, I don't want to give you something complicated, but technically speaking, if you change this sign into cosine, then cosine will swallow the negative sign and the whole function will become even, but it will be hard to integrate. So I wanted to integrate something simpler, say from negative pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, that's just a coincidence that it's the same, 35 cos and x dx. Do we have to integrate from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2? Not really. We can say that since, since cosine of negative x is cos and x, which makes it even function, I can put a huge equal sign and write down this integral only from 0 to pi over 2, 35 cosine x dx, and what is going to be different? 2 in front of it. That's what the property I mentioned at the beginning. So actually, we're just integrating 70, because 2 times 35 is 70, integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine x dx. What is integral of cosine? Is it sine or negative sine? Always differentiate in your mind. Derivative of sine is plus cosine. So integral of cosine is plus sine. That means I'm having sine x here and then integral from 0 to pi over 2, not from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, which makes it a little bit easier because you don't have to deal with negative signs anymore. And I will have 70. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0, so the answer is 70. Nice and fast. Here's the graph of this function. y equals 35 cosine x. If I take this graph, copy it, and show it to you here, then we're working from negative pi over 2, it's over here, 2 pi over 2, it's over here, negative pi over 2, and pi over 2, and then what we're doing is, instead of collecting all the area together, we're just noticing it, 
that if I divide this whole thing, this picture over here, in halves using y-axis, then it's enough to integrate only half of it and double the result. And that's very convenient because if we would go even farther, we could multiply it by three times or four times. And then you don't have to calculate all those areas separately. You can just calculate it once and then double the result. And that worked because, because cosine is even function, which means you can fold it like a butterfly using y-axis. Good job for watching.